Chapter 1 Festivals Old and New The people of Britain have had festivals for thousands of years. Long ago, the sun, the moon, the wind, rain, animals and trees were all important in their religions, and they had festivals for them. When Christianity came to Britain, people wanted to keep some of their old festivals, so they brought the religions together. St. Valentine's Day, Easter, Halloween and Christmas are all old festivals that became Christian festivals. Food, family and flowers are an important part of most celebrations. Most people have a big family dinner at Christmas and many people get together at Thanksgiving too. A lot of people give chocolate and other sweets as presents on Valentine's Day and at Easter and Christmas and some festivals have special food. Restaurants are very busy on Valentine's Day and Mother's Day and flower shops sell a lot of flowers on those days. People today often live far away from their families, so they send cards at special times like Mother's Day, Easter and Christmas. The cards say things like Thinking of you across the miles. Post offices and telephones are very busy too, and many people use their phones and computers to send messages. Times change and festivals also change. People have celebrated many of these festivals for hundreds of years and will go on finding new ways to enjoy them. Chapter 2 The Year Begins New Year's Eve is on the 31st of December, the last day before the New Year begins. In many places, people go to parties or restaurants with friends in the evening. Sometimes they meet outside. In New York, thousands of people go to Times Square. In Sydney, they go down near the sea. In London, they go to Trafalgar Square. Just before midnight, people look at the clock and together they count the last ten seconds before the new year begins. Ten, nine, eight. At midnight, they stand in a circle, hold hands and sing an old song called Old Lang Syne. A Scottish man called Robert Burns wrote the words of this song about two hundred years ago. The song says that it is good to remember your old friends. Then many people drink a glass of champagne, light some fireworks or dance until the sun comes up. In Scotland, New Year's Eve has a special name, Hogmanay. At Hogmanay, there is a tradition called first footing. The first person to come into the house in the new year is the first foot. If he is a tall man with dark hair, he will bring good luck to the house. He must carry some food, some money, or a piece of black coal for the fire. In Edinburgh and other Scottish cities, there are house parties and street parties, Scottish music and dancing, parades and lots of fireworks. Sometimes the parties go on all night and into the next day. New Year's Day, the 1st of January, 
is a holiday for most people, and the banks and many shops do not open. Many people stay at home and rest on that day, and a lot of people make a New Year's resolution. This means that they decide to do something different because they want to be a better person. For example, they say, "I'm going to stop smoking," or "I'm going to eat better," or "I'm going to learn something new." After the holiday, the shops are very busy with January sales. At sale time, things in the shops are cheaper, sometimes much cheaper. So it is a good time to go shopping. And when people do go out, they usually say "Happy New Year" when they see friends and family for the first time in January. A few weeks later, it is Valentine's Day. This started more than two thousand years ago, as a winter festival, on the fifteenth of February. On that day, people asked their gods to give them good fruit and vegetables, and strong animals. When the Christians came to Britain, they came with a story about a man called Saint Valentine. The story is that Valentine was a Christian who lived in Rome in the third century. The Roman emperor at the time, Claudius the Second, was not a Christian. Claudius thought that married soldiers did not make good soldiers, so he told his soldiers that they must not marry. Valentine worked for the church. And one day he helped a soldier who wanted to marry. The emperor said that Valentine had to die because of this, and he sent Valentine to prison. But Valentine fell in love with the daughter of a man who worked there. Just before he died, he sent a note to this woman, and at the end of the note he wrote. Your Valentine. He died on the fourteenth of February, so the date of the festival changed from the fifteenth to the fourteenth of February, and the name changed to Saint Valentine's Day. In the early nineteenth century, people started to give Valentine's cards to the person they loved. On the fourteenth of February, the cards had pictures of birds and flowers on them, perhaps red roses, the flower of love, and inside, there were words like these: "Roses are red, my love; violets are blue; sugar is sweet, my love, but not as sweet as you." People still send each other Valentine's cards, but often they do not write their names inside. They just write, "Be my Valentine," or "From your Valentine." Some children give their friends or teachers cards or chocolates. A man will perhaps give red roses to the woman that he loves. A lot of people go out to restaurants for the evening, and have dinner for two. And some people think it is a good day to marry. Chapter Three: National Days. Most countries have a day that is special to them, a national day. For England, Scotland, Wales, and Ireland, the national day 
is the day that belongs to their patron saint. This is someone from the church who is important for a group of people. Saint Christopher, for example, is the patron saint of travellers. The first of these four national days is the first of March. Saint David, Dewi Sant in the Welsh language, is the patron saint of Wales, and the first of March is Saint David's Day. David and his followers lived quietly in Wales. They did not eat meat, and they drank only water. David became a famous teacher and a very important man in the church in Wales. He died in 589. The Welsh love music and singing, so there are many concerts around the country on this day. Next is the 17th of March, St. Patrick's Day, which is a big day in Ireland and also in North America. St. Patrick was born in about 385. He travelled all over Ireland, teaching and talking to people about Christianity. He also built a lot of schools and churches there. He died on the 17th of March, 461. On St. Patrick's Day, there are parades, church services and festivals in Dublin, Belfast and many other Irish towns and cities. But it is also an important day in the USA. In the 19th century, a lot of Irish people travelled to the USA to begin a new life. St. Patrick's Day was very important to them because it was a day to remember Ireland. The St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York is now one of the biggest parades in the world. There are parties in other places all over the USA and Canada too. Some people wear green clothes, some drink lots of beer, and some even drink green beer. St. George is the patron saint of England, and the 23rd of April is St. George's Day. He was a Christian and a soldier in the Roman army in the 3rd century. When the Roman Emperor Diocletian said that people could not follow the Christian religion any more, George said that he would not stop being a Christian. Diocletian was very angry and told his soldiers to torture and then kill George, and he died in the year 303. One famous story about him is that he killed a dragon that ate people, Pictures of St. George often show him on a horse, killing a dragon. St. George became the patron saint of England in the 14th century, in the time of King Edward III. In 1348, King Edward shouted, St. George for England, when he took his men to war. Most English people do not do anything special on this day, but some are trying to make it a more important day. In the city of Salisbury, there has been a parade on St. George's Day since King Edward's time. St. Andrew is the patron saint of Scotland, and the 30th of November is St. Andrew's Day. St. Andrew was probably a fisherman in Galilee and took Christianity to Greece. One story says that the Romans killed him there. Someone moved his body to Istanbul in Turkey and then to Scotland. They left the body in the place that is now the city called St. Andrews. Scotland celebrates St. Andrew's Day with concerts and cailies, parties with traditional music and dancing. 
Scots who live in other countries often meet on this day and think about family and friends far away. In other countries, the National Day is often on the date of something important that happened there. In Australia, that day is the 26th of January, Australia Day. On that day in 1788, the first British ships arrived in the place that is now called Sydney. The Australia Day Regatta, a celebration with lots of sailing races, began in 1837 and still happens in Sydney every year. There are lots of other celebrations all over the country. But not everybody is happy about Australia Day. Many Aboriginal Australians, the first people of Australia, do not celebrate this day. New Zealand's National Day is on the 6th of February and is called Waitangi Day. On the 6th of February, 1840, people from the British government met a group of Maori chiefs in Waitangi in the north of New Zealand. They all put their names on an important paper called the Treaty of Waitangi, which said that New Zealand was now a British colony. On the 6th of February every year, there is a celebration at Waitangi, and there are lots of celebrations, concerts and festivals in other places. But not all Maori are happy about the Treaty of Waitangi or the celebrations. Canada Day is the 1st of July. On that day, people remember the day in 1867 when the British North America colonies became the Dominion of Canada. There are celebrations all over the country with pancake breakfasts, barbecues, parades, music and fireworks. The biggest celebrations are in Ottawa, home of the Canadian government. It's a great day to visit the city. Chapter 4 Lent and Easter Easter is the most important festival in the church year, more important than Christmas. People begin to get ready for Easter 40 days before Easter Sunday. These 40 days are called Lent and they begin on Ash Wednesday. The day before Ash Wednesday is Pancake Day. During Lent, some Christians stop eating a favourite food, like sugar or chocolate. In the past, people traditionally stopped eating eggs and milk. So, just before Lent began, they took all their eggs and milk and made thin round cakes called pancakes. People eat pancakes in different ways in different countries, but in Britain, they usually have them with lemon juice and sugar. To make about 12 pancakes, you need 125 grams of flour, salt, just a little, one egg, 300 milliliters of milk, butter, sugar, lemon juice. Put the flour and salt in a big bowl. Make a hole in the middle and break the egg into it. Use a fork to mix it all together. Slowly mix the milk into the egg and flour. Make your pan hot, then put some butter in it. Put two big spoons of the mix into the pan to make a thin pancake. 
cook for about half a minute, then turn the pancake over. Toss it if you're feeling clever. Put the pancake on a plate and keep it warm while you cook the other pancakes. Eat your pancake with a little lemon juice and sugar. 38 days after Pancake Day is Good Friday. On this day, the Romans killed Jesus Christ in Jerusalem about 2,000 years ago. Christians think that Jesus came back to life two days later, on Easter Sunday. Easter is now a Christian festival, but the word Easter comes from Eostra, the old name for the goddess of spring. Easter Day is the Sunday after the first full moon after the first day of spring, the 21st of March. It is always between the 22nd of March and the 25th of April. Many animals and birds are born in the spring, so when people started to send Easter cards in the 19th century, the cards often had baby sheep, rabbits or chickens on them. Eggs are an important part of Easter because they mean spring and new life. On Easter Sunday, people give chocolate Easter eggs as presents. This tradition started in Europe in the early 19th century and came to Britain in the 1870s. Some mothers and fathers tell their children that the Easter rabbit brings the eggs and hides them in the garden, and that the children must go outside and look for them. Many people also eat hot cross buns at Easter. These are a kind of bread made with fruit and spices, and they have a white cross on top. You eat them hot with butter. There is an old song about them. Hot cross buns, hot cross buns, one a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns. If you have no daughters, give them to your sons. One a penny, two a penny, hot cross buns buns. Some women and children decorate hats, called Easter bonnets. They put lots of spring flowers, rabbits or chickens on them, and wear them in Easter bonnet parades. And, of course, many people go to church on Easter Day. There are lots of flowers in the churches, and people sing special Easter songs. Easter Monday is a holiday for most people, so many watch some sport or go out for the day. Children usually have one or two weeks holiday from school around Easter. Chapter 5 Families and Fools in Britain, the fourth Sunday of Lent was called Mothering Sunday. Centuries ago, people visited the Mother Church in their town or village on this day. Later, when young people started to leave home to work and live farther away, they had a day's holiday once a year to visit their mother and the Mother Church. They took presents like flowers or cake home to their mothers. Slowly, Mothering Sunday changed to Mother's Day, a special day for mothers. During the Second World War, 1939 to 1945, many American soldiers in Britain stayed with British families and gave their British mothers presents on Mothering Sunday. But in the USA, Mother's Day is on a different day. An American woman called Anna Jarvis had a special service in her church 
to remember her mother when she died. She wanted to have a special day for mothers, and many people agreed that it would be a good thing. Anna's mother died on the second Sunday in May, and Anna wanted that day to be Mother's Day. She talked to business people and people in the government about her plan for a special day all over the USA. In 1914, President Woodrow Wilson said that the second Sunday in May would be Mother's Day across the USA. It is also that day in Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. Children try to do things to say thank you to their mothers on that day. They give them breakfast in bed, or take them out for a meal, or give them a present. People have also celebrated Father's Day for about a hundred years. Many people wanted to thank their fathers for all their hard work, help, and love too. The first Father's Day was in the USA in 1910. In 1966, American President Lyndon Johnson said that the third Sunday in June would be Father's Day across the USA. It is the same day in Britain and Canada. But in Australia and New Zealand, it is the first Sunday in September. On Father's Day, people often like to take their father out, for example, for a meal, or to watch or do some sport. After Mother's Day comes April, and April Fool's Day. How did April Fool's Day begin? Until the middle of the 16th century, France celebrated the New Year on the 1st of April. Then, in 1564, King Charles IX decided to change this, and the New Year began on the 1st of January. The message about this change travelled through the country very slowly, and some people did not know about the change. Or did not like it. When these people tried to give New Year presents on the first of April, other people laughed at them, and called them fools or stupid people. After this, the first of April was called All Fools' Day, and later April Fools' Day. In many countries, it became a day to play jokes on people. And laugh at them. Some people play little jokes on their friends and family. Perhaps they change the time on the clocks, or put salt in the sugar bowl so someone's tea tastes terrible. Some play jokes on thousands of people on this day. In 1957, the BBC, British Broadcasting Corporation, showed a television program. About Swiss spaghetti trees. At that time, not many people ate spaghetti in Britain. It was a new food, so they did not know much about it. On the program, women took spaghetti from trees and put it in the sun to dry. When the program finished, a lot of people telephoned the BBC. They all wanted to buy spaghetti trees for their gardens. In 1998, there was Burger King's new hamburger. Millions of people in the USA usually use their left hand to write with, and the left-handed hamburger was for them. Thousands of people went to Burger King to get a left-handed hamburger, and thousands of others asked for a right-handed hamburger, please, not a left-handed one. The next year, Burger King played the same joke in Britain, and the same thing happened. In 2005, another British TV program told people about fruit shakes, a fruit and milk drink. The makers of fruit shakes gave their cows fruit to eat, 
and the cows gave them a milk drink that tasted of fruit. Every year there are new jokes on TV, in the newspapers, and on the radio. And millions of people think that the stories are true. Chapter 6 Summer Celebrations The longest day of the year is called the summer solstice. In Britain, it is usually on the 21st of June, which is the first day of summer. The word solstice comes from two Latin words, sol, which means sun, and sistere, which means to stand still. Summer was always a good season for people in the past because it was easy to find food. It was also a good time to find sweet honey. So the first full moon in June is called the honeymoon. Many men and women marry in June and the holiday that people take after they marry is still called the honeymoon. At Stonehenge and Avebury in Wiltshire, England, there are some special circles made of big, heavy stones which have been there for about 5,000 years. How did they get there? Why are they there? Who put them there? There are lots of different answers to these questions, but nobody can really be sure. Because the summer solstice is traditionally a time of sun, light, food, love and hot weather, People come from all over England to Stonehenge and Avebury on the 21st of June to celebrate. Some of the visitors are Druids, who follow an old pagan religion, older than Christianity. Some are travellers, who like to move around the country and live in lots of different places. And some just want to stay up all night and then watch the sun come up in a very famous, old and interesting place. Soon after the summer solstice, there is an important date in the USA, the 4th of July. During the 17th and 18th centuries, many people sailed from Britain to North America and started a new life there. New homes like this in other countries were called colonies. The British king was still king of the people in the colonies, and so they had to send taxes to Britain every year. But the 13 American colonies wanted to be free from Britain. They wanted their government to be in America. They did not want to send money to Britain, and many people became very angry about this. In 1770, British soldiers shot some of these people in Boston, and in 1773, there was the famous Boston Tea Party. A tea ship came to Boston, and there was a fight about the taxes on the tea. 340 big boxes of tea went into the water. Now King George III and his government were angry too. On the 4th of July 1776, the United States government in Philadelphia agreed to the Declaration of Independence. This said that the United States was a free or independent country and that George III was not its king any more. Now it was war. The British and the Americans fought each other until 1781, when the Americans won. In 1783, the United States of America was born. The first 4th of July celebration was in Philadelphia, in 1777 during the war. There were guns, parades, fireworks, music and a lot of noise. 
Now, every year on the 4th of July, Americans celebrate Independence Day. There are special church services at this time, but most of the celebrations are outside because it is summer. Many families have a barbecue, eat and play games in their gardens or in a park. In many towns, there are parades through the streets with loud music and lots of bright colours. The red, white and blue American flag flies everywhere. It has 50 white stars and 13 stripes, 7 red, 6 white. The 50 stars are for the 50 states in the United States and the 13 stripes are for the first 13 states, the colonies. The flag has changed many times, but today's flag goes back to the 4th of July 1960, when Hawaii became the 50th state. Independence Day usually ends with lots of fireworks. It is like one big party. Chapter 7 Fires and Fireworks The pagans who lived in Britain 2,000 years ago celebrated their new year on the 1st of November. Then the Christians came and people celebrated Hallow Mass, a three-day festival between the 31st of October and the 2nd of November. The 31st of October was called All Hallows' Eve, and slowly the name changed to Halloween. In November, winter is near, and hundreds of years ago, people thought that bad spirits, like ghosts, came in the winter. They wanted the bad spirits to go away, so they made fires outside and made jack-o'-lanterns. To do this, they took a big autumn vegetable, usually a pumpkin, and cut off the top. They made a big hole inside the pumpkin and cut a face in the side. Then they put a light inside the pumpkin and put the top on again. People still enjoy doing this today. You can see jack-o'-lanterns with their bright eyes and mouths outside at Halloween. To keep the bad spirits away, people also dressed like witches and ghosts. Children still do this if they go to Halloween parties. People often put up decorations for Halloween parties and play games. The decorations are usually black for dark nights and death and orange for the autumn vegetables. One Halloween party game is called Bobbing for Apples. Many apples fall off the trees in autumn, so they are easy to find. Someone puts some apples in a big bowl of water. The apples stay on top of the water. The first player often puts something over their eyes, so they cannot see. They must keep their hands behind their back and take an apple out of the water with their teeth. Then the next player tries. It can be very difficult, and players usually get very wet. In Canada and the USA, and in some other English-speaking countries, children go trick-or-treating. They dress like witches and ghosts, and go, often in a small group, to the houses of people who live near them. When someone answers the door, the children say, trick or treat. Then the person in the house must decide. Either they give the children a treat, something nice like fruit or chocolate, or the children play a trick on them. For a trick, the children do something bad, like throw an egg or some flour 
at the house. November brings more fires and fireworks. Sometimes you will hear people say, Remember, remember the 5th of November. They are talking about Guy Fawkes Night. The story of Guy Fawkes Night begins in 1605. At that time, James I was King of England. But some people did not want him to be king because they followed a different religion from James. So a group of them, a man called Guy Fawkes and his friends, made a plot to kill King James and his government at the Houses of Parliament in London on the 5th of November, 1605. They put 36 boxes of gunpowder in a room underneath the Houses of Parliament because they wanted to kill a lot of people. But the plan did not work. One of the plotters wrote a note to someone about it. At about midnight, on the 4th of November, the King's soldiers found Guy Fawkes and the gunpowder. They sent him to prison, but he did not want to give the names of his friends. They tortured him, and five days later he said all their names. Some of the plotters tried to escape, but in January 1606, Guy Fawkes and some of his friends were killed in front of the Houses of Parliament. When people heard that the plotters were dead, they celebrated with lots of fires in the streets. King James was alive and well. Since that time, every year on the 5th of November in most parts of Britain, people build a big fire outside with all the dead leaves and old pieces of wood that they do not want. The fire is called a bonfire. Children push newspaper into old clothes to make something that looks like a man. They call it a guy, after Guy Fawkes, and sometimes they carry the guy around the streets to show people. They say, penny for the guy, and ask people for money for fireworks. Some people have a bonfire with fireworks in their garden, but fireworks are expensive, so often people have one big party together in a park or a field. It is usually very cold in November, so they have hot food and drinks to keep warm. And every year, before the government comes to the Houses of Parliament, people go through the building and look carefully for gunpowder. Chapter 8 Remembering In November, near the end of the year, it is time to remember. On the 11th of November, 1918, the First World War came to an end, and now the 11th of November has become Remembrance Day. An Australian man called Edward George Honey wrote to the London Evening News in 1919. In his letter he said he wanted people to stop on one day and think about the soldiers who died in the war. King George V saw the letter and agreed, so he asked everyone to stop work and remember the dead. And so, in the UK and other countries, People are silent for two minutes at the eleventh hour of the eleventh day of the eleventh month. They stop everything and wait silently in schools, streets, shopping centres and even big busy airports. The nearest Sunday to the eleventh of November is Remembrance Sunday. In towns and cities, Soldiers, young and old, 
walk together in parades to remember the soldiers who died in all the different wars. There are church services and special music, and at the war memorials, which have the names of dead soldiers on them, people put flowers. In London, the Queen and the Prime Minister put flowers on the big war memorial called the Cenotaph. At this time of year, many people wear red paper flowers called poppies. Why? During the First World War, hundreds of thousands of soldiers died on the fields of Flanders in Belgium. Later, thousands of poppies grew in the same fields. The beautiful red flowers were the colour of blood. When people buy the paper poppies today, the money helps old soldiers and their families. In the USA, this day is called Veterans Day, while in Australia and New Zealand, the important day is Anzac Day on the 25th of April. On this day in 1915, a big group of soldiers from these two countries, called the Australia and New Zealand Army Corps, arrived in Gallipoli in Turkey. About 11,000 of them died there. All the soldiers who fought at Gallipoli are dead now, but there are still services on Anzac Day early in the morning. When the sun comes up, people remember the young Anzac soldiers at Gallipoli and other soldiers who have died in wars. Chapter 9 Thanksgiving most fruit and vegetables grow through the summer. When autumn comes, it is time to bring them in from the trees and fields. This time is called the harvest. After the harvest, many people want to say thank you for all the food. There are church services called harvest festivals or thanksgiving services. There are lots of vegetables, fruit, flowers and bread in the church and people sing special songs of thanks. These services started hundreds of years ago. In September 1620, a group of English people called the Pilgrim Fathers sailed from Plymouth, England across the Atlantic Ocean in a ship called the Mayflower, to Cape Cod in North America. They went away from England because they did not agree with the religion in England. They wanted to make a new life in a new country. They sailed for 66 dangerous days across the Atlantic Ocean. When they arrived, they called their new home New England. But they were not the first people to live there. The Wampanoag were the first people. Sometimes the Pilgrim Fathers fought with the Wampanoag, but they also learned a lot from them. The Wampanoag taught them to live from their new land and to grow and cook new kinds of fruit and vegetables. The first winter was difficult. Many of the Pilgrim Fathers died because it was very cold and they had little food. In the spring they started to grow food, with the help of some friendly Wampanoag, and in the autumn of 1621 they celebrated their first harvest. They gave thanks not only for the harvest, but for their new home new life, and new friends. Thanksgiving Day is the fourth Thursday in November. Canada is north of the USA, 
so the winter is longer and the harvest is earlier there. The date of Thanksgiving Day there is the second Monday in October. Most American and Canadian families still have a Thanksgiving Day dinner together. They have turkey and autumn vegetables and then pumpkin pie. In the USA, it is an important day for American football. Many people go to watch football or stay at home and watch it on television. Chapter 10 In a New Country In the last few centuries, many people have moved to other countries, taking their language and religion with them, just like the Pilgrim Fathers. People of different cultures have also come to live in English-speaking countries, bringing their festivals and celebrations with them. Today, Children in countries like Britain, Canada, the USA, Australia and New Zealand learn about other people's special days from a young age. They learn about religious celebrations such as Jewish Hanukkah, Hindu Diwali and Muslim Eid and they learn about other sides of people's cultures too. There are many festivals which celebrate the culture of different groups of immigrants, people who have come to another country to live. One famous festival is the Notting Hill Carnival in London at the end of August. Immigrants from the Caribbean began the carnival in the 1960s. At first, it was a small street festival with a few people in colourful clothes and some Caribbean music, but it got bigger and bigger. Now, a million or more people come to see the carnival on the streets of London every summer. There is also the Brick Lane Festival, in a part of London sometimes called Bangladesh, because there are so many people from Bangladesh there. This area is famous for its restaurants and great food and for the many immigrants who have lived there over the years. Canada has Multiculturalism Day on the 27th of June with celebrations of the food, music and dance of many immigrant groups all across the country. In the USA, there are many African American festivals and Spanish speakers from Latin American countries have started Hispanic American festivals in many cities. Most big cities in the USA have Chinatowns, where a lot of Chinese immigrants live. San Francisco's Chinatown is the biggest outside of Asia. Sydney and Melbourne in Australia have big Chinatowns too. Great places to eat Chinese food and see colourful celebrations of Chinese New Year with parades, dragons and fireworks. And in Auckland, New Zealand, they have the Asia NZ Lantern Festival. This celebrates both Chinese New Year and the cultures of the many immigrants who came to New Zealand from Asia. So times change and the traditions of the old country become part of the celebrations of the new country. Chapter 11 Christmas Then December comes, and children begin to get excited because of Christmas. About 2,000 years ago, Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem. At Christmas, people remember that special time. Today, 
Christmas is a very important time in the Christian year, but it is also very important to people who do not go to church. It is a time for presents, parties, and time with the family. People start to get ready for Christmas in late October or early November. They decorate their shops with lights, trees, and other decorations. Shops get very busy and stay open later. People with family and friends in other countries often send them cards and presents, and everyone begins to make plans for the coming holiday. Some people begin to look for presents too. In the middle of December, most families buy Christmas trees, put them inside the house, and put colourful decorations on them. They also send cards to friends and family. The cards say things like "Merry Christmas" and a "Happy New Year," or "Season's Greetings." These two traditions, the trees and the cards, both started in the 19th century. Many children learn about the baby Jesus at school. Sometimes they do a play about the story and sing Christmas songs called carols for their mothers and fathers. A lot of schools have parties for the children, and many adults have parties at work in December. Most people do not have to work on the twenty-fifth and the twenty-sixth of December, and many have a week's holiday, from the twenty-fifth of December to the first of January. They usually spend this time at home with their family, or perhaps they visit friends or family who live far away. The Christmas holiday begins on the twenty-fourth of December, Christmas Eve. People often stop work early and have a drink together, or finish their Christmas shopping. They put special Christmas paper on the presents and leave them under the tree. Children leave a stocking for Santa Claus, called Father Christmas in Britain, when they go to bed. Santa is a big man with white hair and red clothes. Who brings presents for children during the night? Mothers and fathers tell their children that Santa only comes when they are sleeping. They also tell them that Santa leaves presents for good children, but for bad children he only leaves a piece of black coal. The children are excited, of course. So often they do not sleep very well. Some children leave a drink and a mince pie for Santa, and some vegetables for his animals. Many people go to church at midnight on Christmas Eve. They listen to the Christmas story and sing carols. Next morning it is Christmas Day, the twenty-fifth of December. Children usually wake up very early. They look in their stockings to see the presents that Santa put there for them. After breakfast, they open their other presents around the tree. Christmas dinner is in the afternoon and is the biggest meal of the day. Before they start to eat, people pull crackers. The crackers make a loud noise and have a small game and a paper hat inside. Dinner is usually turkey with lots of winter vegetables, and then a Christmas pudding. Often there are hot mince pies too. At three o'clock, many people in Britain turn on their televisions because the Queen says "Happy Christmas" to everyone. A lot of people go for a walk in the afternoon or play with their new games. In the evening. People eat cold meat and Christmas cake, a kind of fruit cake, but they are usually not very hungry because of their big dinner. The twenty-sixth of December is called Boxing Day, 
St. Stephen's Day in Ireland. It is a holiday for many people, but a lot of shops open on this day. In the 19th century, rich people gave boxes of presents to their workers on Boxing Day. Now, people enjoy eating, drinking and watching television at home or going out to watch some sport. Another British Christmas tradition is the pantomime. A pantomime is a kind of play with a children's story, like Cinderella or Aladdin, and lots of music and songs. There is usually a man who wears women's clothes and plays an old woman. She is not very beautiful, but she is usually very funny. Children like pantomimes because they can laugh, sing, shout and make lots of noise. They often go with their school or family. The Christmas season ends on the 12th day after the 25th of December, which is the 6th of January. Most people take down their Christmas trees and decorations by this date, and some people think that it is unlucky to do this after the 6th of January. But after Christmas, the next festival comes very quickly. Soon it is the 31st of December. It is New Year's Eve, and then a new year of seasons and celebrations begins.